How would you like a 15% discount to my daily email, the stack of stuff, the show notes, discounts to the conference, all of that? All you need to do is text the word SHOW to 33777. You'll get the annual subscription with a 15% discount to my daily email. You'll get the stack of stuff, the links to the show notes, discounts to the conference, and so much more. All you have to do is text the word SHOW, S-H-O-W, to 33777. Text SHOW to 33777. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour 2. My fellow Americans, welcome. It's Eric Erickson here across the nation. The phone number, if you want to be on the program, 877-973-7425. I am delighted to have you. However, you got to be on topic, and you don't know what the topic is because... Well, you haven't listened to the show yet. It makes it a challenge for you, so you got to be on your A-game to make it past the call screener because he knows what I'm going to talk about. If you subscribe to the show notes, you got a better sense of the topics in the show notes because that's what I'm going to talk about. Regardless, I want you all to do something. You have homework today. It is to text the word ERIC, E-R-I-C-K, to 33777 and click the very first link. I'm not asking you to subscribe. You don't have to subscribe. But I am asking you, I'm begging you, I'm pleading with you to text Eric to 33777 and click the first link and read the piece. You'll, you'll see the list of the articles on my daily email and the very, the one of the very first ones will now be the second one down. It just says pause. That's the title of the piece, pause. And I want you to read that piece. I need you to read that piece. I need you to to reset your brain on this coming general election and and, and the relevance of what is and is not important. So just, just read the piece that is entitled Pause. Not going to talk to you about it right now. I want you to text Eric to 33777, click the first link, and I want you to find the piece that says Pause. It's one down, and I want you to read that. Now, we'll move on. Going to move on. Nate. Nate emailed me. Nate says it's. It, I, I said it was political malpractice. The Biden administration malpractice to, to not file the, these notices in court. Um, and he says it's it's not malpractice. It's an intentional release of illegals, an intentionally banning of the internal combustion engine. Don't use language to suggest it's an incompetence or a mistake. These acts are intentional and malevolent. I said, Nate, keep listening. He says he's still listening. I would like to talk about the political malpractice of the Biden administration. (laughs) Listen, Nate, listen, listen, all of you, listen to me here. Listen. What is the goal of a candidate running for office? It is to win re-election. To win re-election. The Biden administration is doing a number of things that, Nate, I agree with you. They're intentional and they're malevolent. But they're also political malpractice. You must be able to distinguish some intentional acts also amount to political malpractice. The Biden administration has given a heckler's veto to the 10% of the population of Michigan that hates Jews. They are advancing a resolution before the Security Council of the United Nations to call for a permanent ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. You have Chuck Schumer out demanding Netanyahu step down for the sake of peace in the Middle East. By the way, the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, has announced uh, in the last few minutes he's invited Benjamin Netanyahu to address Congress. More than 60% of Americans support Israel and believe Israel is right to pursue Hamas. And the Biden administration has given a heckler's veto to the malicious, malcontented few who are opposed to Israel and hate the Jews because he's worried about winning Michigan. 
concurrent to that. The Biden administration has decided to ban the internal combustion engine vehicle, vehicles that use fossil fuels. Now, they're saying it's not a ban. But if a 15-week abortion ban with, with exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother is a ban, according to the media, then to be intellectually honest, and I know they're not, but to be intellectually honest, this is a ban on fossil fuel cars. Why is it a ban? Because the Biden administration impo- intends to impose incremental regulations that will force the emission standards of vehicles so high that the only way to meet the standards will be to get rid of the internal combustion engine. The Biden administration's spin is, well, we don't care how they meet the standards. They can keep the internal combustion engine. They just got to meet the standards. Actually, the standards are so high that it'll be impossible for any engine that burns fuel to meet the standards, which will force people into electric vehicles. I have looked at the data from Biden's win in Michigan, and I am convinced that the problem with Biden's win is not just the progressives, but the auto workers who know what EVs will do to the auto industry of Detroit. But Biden has decided to side with the progressives. Now, I need to make a larger point to all of you on this political malpractice issue. I have run campaigns quite successfully. I do know what I'm talking about here. When you believe you've already won, you operate in ways that cost you the election. Joe Biden won about 38, 40,000 votes in 2020. Donald Trump won in 2016 with about 40,000 votes. If seven-tenths of a percent of the Hispanic population of the United States shifts to the Republicans, that's more than the 40,000-vote margin of 2020. If a very small fraction of black voters shift to the GOP, Joe Biden loses a very narrow election. What do you think is likely to happen when Joe Biden bans your ability to buy a cheap car and forces you into a battery car? What do you think the working class black and Hispanic voters are going to do? See, here's the data in the election. This is indisputable data. This is the data the Republicans and the Democrats both acknowledge. White voters in America have already made up their mind about the election. The undecided voters in America right now are black and Hispanic voters. And you know what they vote on? Cultural issues. You're banning their car? That's going to shift their votes. You're overrunning their cities with illegal immigrants. Now, this is this is part of the political malpractice of the Democrats. Yeah, it's, it's a willful policy, but it's political malpractice. And why is it political malpractice? Because it could cost Joe Biden the election doing these things that he thinks will actually help him because it plays to the donor class of the Democratic Party. It plays to the white people who are already voting Democrat. They are taking their black and Hispanic voters for granted at a time black and Hispanic voters increasingly are up for grabs. That's why it's political malpractice. It's incompetence on the political side. It may be intentional policy. It may be malevolent policy. It may be designed to force change in our economy and force change in our lives. But as a political matter, it could cost Joe Biden the election. And there's no such thing as permanence in politics, particularly when done by executive order and regulation that can be undone by the next administration that doesn't share your politics, which would be Donald Trump's administration. The data shows white people have made up their minds about the election. Black and Hispanic people have not. You're going to force Hispanic voters to the GOP on immigration. Do you know why? Because the Democrats are so used to looking at people as an identity block. They look at all Hispanic voters as the same. They don't look at them as Nicaraguan, Honduran, Guatemalan, Mexican, Colombian, Venezuelan, Argentinian, uh, Peruvian, Ecuadorian. They don't look at them that way. They look at them as up. You're Latinx. 
Rhymes with Kleenex, you're Latinx. I noticed the Biden administration says they're going to launch a new Latino outreach. They're dropping the Latinx. They're dropping the X and going back to the O. It's also, by the way, a sign they get they have a problem when they're dropping Latinx that plays well in progressive white neighborhoods and not among any Hispanic voter. No Hispanic voter uses the word Latinx. They have a problem. And they treat them all as an interchangeable hodgepodge of an assimilated uh, Hispanic group that hasn't assimilated. And the Hispanic voters of America are the most hostile voters to illegal immigration. Do you ever hear this in the newspaper? Because it's the God's honest truth when you look at the data. Hispanic voters in the United States, by being a voter, what is a voter? A citizen, unless the Democrats have their way. A citizen, a citizen who votes, Hispanic citizens who vote hate illegal immigration because they busted their butts to come here legally and they see all these people flooding the border illegally, trying to take jobs, frankly, from the Hispanic legal community. And they're furious about it and doing these sorts of things where they're screwing up the the notification process so 200,000 deportation cases get thrown out. It may be intentional to allow those people to stay here, but it is gross political malpractice when you're trying to win an election because if you get to your second term as president of the United States, you are what? Term limited. And what does that mean for you? You are no longer beholden to any constituency group except to the extent you're preserving your party's power. So you can get to your second term by being a reasonable moderate Democrat and then go full bore progressive in your second term. You only behave like this if you think you've already got it in the bag. Some of you are trying to outthink me and say, but Mr. Erickson, maybe they think they're going to lose. Well, that would be even more political malpractice because Donald Trump can undo everything they just did through executive action. No, 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 no. The Biden administration, by their actions, is showing they think they've already won. And in the process, they're starting to alienate key groups. They're alienating Jewish voters. They're alienating pro-Israel voters. They're alienating Hispanic voters. They're alienating the black working class. They're driving up costs for the middle class. They're doing all of these things that alienate them. Why? Because they're scared to death of losing progressives. They're scared of losing progressives to Robert Kennedy. In fact, a growing bit of data shows that Robert Kennedy is hurting Joe Biden, not Donald Trump. Anecdote is not evidence. Let me tell you my anecdote. I did an event a couple of weeks ago, Druid Hills Country Club in Atlanta. I drove from my office at my flagship station, WSB, where my card works. That's how I know I haven't been fired. They still let me in the building there. And I had to drive through some of the most progressive neighborhoods in the city of Atlanta. I drove through Virginia Highlands on East Rock Springs Road. I headed over towards Druid Hills. I went down Briarcliff, and I got over to Druid Hills in the Clifton area. And do you know what I saw? Only three, but I saw three houses. And those three houses in the highly progressive area, they all had Robert Kennedy signs in their yard. One of them had a full life-size cutout of Robert Kennedy. And those three houses, they were all older Jewish people who had supported Stacey Abrams. And now they're voting for Robert Kennedy. Joe Biden's worried about his left flank. He thinks in their head they've made a political calculation that voters so hate Donald Trump they'll come home to Joe Biden by November. In the process, he's making massive, massive political malpractice. Just consider again Bidenomics. This isn't an ad. Just Bidenomics. He wrapped himself in that label. They didn't buy the domain. Americans for Prosperity did. And now they got a website at Bidenomics.com that tells you about Joe Biden's record. That's political malpractice that they didn't do this. It's political malpractice that they're trying right now to aggressively shut down the fossil fuel burning engine when they're worried about Michigan, a must-win state. They're alienating auto workers. It's political malpractice for them at a time that Hispanic voters, their number one issue is illegal immigration because the illegal immigrants take Hispanic immigrants' jobs first. It's political malpractice for him to let this happen at the border and to say there's nothing he can do about it, to let these people go. It may be for a long-term progressive policy 
It may be willful and malevolent, but it's political malpractice to do it because you have not won the election, Joe Biden. You're taken for granted you're going to win, so you're doing things to begin your second term, and you haven't gotten there yet, and everything you're doing is reversible by Donald Trump because you've gotten so arrogant and you are so convinced because all of your friends are convinced there's no way Donald Trump can win, and you won't believe it until the moment he does. Hello there. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number 877-973-7425. Should you wish to be on the program, let me go to Anthony. Welcome to the show, sir. How are you? Good. Thank you, Rush, for taking my call. Appreciate sure. It. Uh, the other day you made the comment that the world is in such chaos. Because Trump is not in office. We wouldn't have the Russians going to Ukraine. We wouldn't have the Israelis being attacked by the people in Gaza. We wouldn't have all these problems in the Middle East and Iran, uh, North Korea, et cetera. And, and, I, and, and you said you, your comment was uh, that's because they wouldn't know what he would do. But I disagree. I think they know exactly what he would do. And that's why they would, they would not act out as these people have acted out now. And that may be they the case. They know he would bring down, he'd bring hell to them like they wouldn't know. It, it, that may be the case, although I, I would just say that uh, in, in context of what I was, was going with there, it was it was what Vladimir Putin said about uh, Trump versus Biden, that uh, Biden is a predictable uh, Western politician and Donald Trump was an unpredictable politician, hard to determine his actions. Um, that's what I was getting at. You, you may be right. that they, they may know he would go all, all hell for which he should, particularly with the Houthi in the Red Sea, but... Um, the, yeah. It was more my, my point was about what, what Putin was saying there, that he's he's very unpredictable. That's why the Russians prefer Joe Biden, because, I mean, it was kind of a, a, an interesting statement from Putin, actually. that And, of course, the Democrats, oh, he's saying that because he actually supports um, it, because he actually supports Donald Trump. I mean, if Putin came out and endorsed Donald Trump, they'd say, aha, see, we told you. And if he came out and endorsed Joe Biden, they'd say, ah, this is a trap. He really wants he really wants Trump. I mean, Putin, in his own words, his own words said um, they prefer Biden because he's a more predictable Western politician. That's you can agree or disagree with him, but that's what he said. Now, I must move on and I must tell you about Hillsdale College that you should take their class with Victor Davis Hanson. Millions have taken classes with Hillsdale College. You can be among them. And Victor Davis Hanson is offering you this lecture series for free on the decline of American citizenship. Why it's not a good thing um, to see the decline in American citizenship and how it can be revitalized. It is a very great uh, class from Victor Davis Hanson. And if you all don't know who Victor Davis Hanson is, you should. He's a world-acclaimed uh, historian, military historian. The man is so brilliant. I adore I'm a total fanboy of Victor Davis Hanson. Uh, and, and that you can take this class with him where he teaches you about citizenship. You can take it at your own pace. You can share it with your friends. It's ericforhillsdale.com is where you want to go. Put in your email address. Start a relationship with Hillsdale College. They have incredible courses. This is a great introduction to their type of uh, classes and lecture series you can get for free from Hillsdale. ericforhillsdale.com. Eric, E-R-I-C-K. Eric for Hillsdale.com. It is time to go develop a relationship with Hillsdale College. Greetings and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here across the nation. I want to play you some audio here. Let me give you the phone number real quick, 877-973-7425. I want to play you some audio. This is from Harry Itton. He is uh, CNN's data pollster guy. Listen to this. And this is one of the trend lines that I think really tells the story that's the difference between this election and the 2020 election. So if you ask voters, who do you think would do a better job handling border security and immigration, what do we see? We see that back in 2020, it was basically a dead even split, right? Joe Biden was slightly favored on it, but not overwhelmingly. And of course, he slightly won the election, not overwhelmingly so. Look at where we are today in a Marquette University Law School poll that was put out last month. Look at that advantage that Joe Biden has on, excuse me, that Donald Trump has on immigration and border security. It's near 30 points. This is a tremendous change that's going on. And it's no wonder that Donald Trump is running on immigration. And he's not just running on it in a Republican primary. He's running on in the general election. And I also think that's why there hasn't been quite the backlash that you might expect over Trump's comments, some of which that I, of course, wouldn't make. And it's because that voters at this particular point are quite concerned about immigration and they trust Donald Trump on this particular issue. 
Again, political malpractice from the Biden administration. Say what you will about the policy, whether it's intentional, mendacious, vindictive, malevolent, whatever. Political malpractice, given the polling shows voters' number one issue is immigration, and they overwhelmingly believe that Donald Trump will take care of it. And then there's the world itself. Uh, Matt Morris used to work for the Trump administration. He was on CNN. Listen to this. For office, you're right. Voters often don't rank foreign policy as the top issue. But when you have Afghanistan, when you have what's happening in Israel, Ukraine, and now Haiti, add that to the crisis, it gives a feeling that the world is on fire and there's uncertainty, and that plays into the election. Yes. Yes, it does. I want to talk to you about access journalism because it is directly related to all of this. So here's access journalism in a nutshell. What it is is a journalist is given behind-the-scenes access to the powerful, the elite, the people in charge. And they tell the journalist all sorts of things they don't tell other people. And that journalist essentially becomes a stenographer for the elite, knowing that if he writes critically or disagrees publicly, the access goes away. This leads me to Alex Ward. Alex Ward is described by Politico as a national security reporter who covers the White House's role in forming and executing U.S. foreign policy and the power players shaping national security policy in Washington. That's how he's described. He's a Politico reporter. He's the guy who wrote the story with the headline, and he didn't write the headline, but this was definitely the angle, Republicans Fixate on messy Afghanistan withdrawal. And you will not be surprised to learn that the last third of his piece defends the Democrats, says everybody agrees with the Democrats. The Democrats really did nothing wrong. Alex Ward, political reporter, not editorialist, not opinion writer, reporter, wrote a Biden leg humping book called The Internationalists. You can learn everything you need to know about Alex Ward. Again, political reporter, his book, with the subtitle, The Fight to Restore American Foreign Policy After Trump. The Fight to Restore American Foreign Policy After Trump suggests that it was somehow degraded in a way that must be restored, which suggests he thinks Donald Trump did something bad. So a clear editorial bias from this reporter against Trump, and the Politico continues to allow him to report as a supposedly objective reporter who is clearly getting access to the Biden principle. So what of the internationalists? What actually has happened in the world? Shall we review the Team Biden-Anthony Blinken world order? We have a botched withdrawal from Afghanistan that leads to numerous deaths and Americans left behind and people falling out of the wheel holes of airplanes. We have... Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine and global assassination campaign of his critics. We have Iran's oil production increase, finances restored, Iranian sympathizers infiltrating the Biden team to shape pro-Iran policies. As an aside, this is one of the most remarkable stories to me. Semaphore, the new website, reports with the receipts, the goods, and the documentation that a bunch of Iranian sympathizers and possible spies have inserted themselves into and infiltrated the inner circles of the Biden administration's foreign policy team at the Defense Department and the State Department and the White House itself. In fact, Biden's lead negotiator for Iran is disappeared uh, because he has been compromised and the global media refuses to report on what Seema did and reported. Semaphore has all the documentation, and the global media has ignored the fact that Iran has infiltrated Biden's uh, orbit. And so the Biden administration with these Iranian sympathizers allows Iran to start selling oil again, which funds terrorism, forcing John Kirby from the White House to admit that they know that whenever Iran gets money, it funds terrorism and doesn't feed its people. So they admitted to knowing Iran would fund terrorism and admitted to allowing Iran to sell oil to China so they could fund terrorism. And then guess what happens? Hamas attacks Israel. Israeli-Saudi talks were canceled. They were on the verge of giving official recognition to each other. 
And then the Houthis start attacking shipping channels, and the Biden administration does nothing but a few limp slaps. Mexico has announced it's no longer keeping immigrants in Mexico. There's now a border crisis. Niger has kicked the United States military out. By the way, reports are coming out that the reason the military undone in Niger kicked the Americans out is because the American ambassador belittled the military, tried to woman explain to them how to do their jobs, and treated them like children, and they were offended by the Biden diplomatic advisor and the general who went with her. So they threw the Americans out of Niger. We're now forced to shut down a very important American air base in northern Niger that we were using to contain Islamic fascists. There have also been military coups, not just in Niger, but Burkina Faso and Mali, and they're all relying on the Wagner Group, controlled now by Vladimir Putin since he assassinated the leader of the Wagner Group. The Sahel itself in Africa is increasingly unstable. Islamic terrorists are beginning to spread again, as are Russian mercenaries, compromising American and European interests. South Africa has begun helping Russia, China, and Iran. The Houthi are giving a pass to Russian, Chinese, and Iranian shipping channels and not, not attacking them. The Chinese have escalated tensions in the South China Sea and with Taiwan. They're escalating tensions with Vietnam and the Philippines. China has increased spying within the United States. China has dabbled in at least one American congressional election and multiple Canadian elections. Haiti has collapsed. The Cubans are rioting. The Central American nations that have done their most to contain crime and cartels are the ones the Biden administration has attacked and criticized. That's what the internationalists have brought us. These are the people Alex Ward got access to and wrote a fawning, leg-humping book about and the world is on fire because of them. Again, Matt Mowers, who worked for the Trump administration. I would say, you know, I was at the State Department that ran for office, right. right? Voters often don't rank foreign policy as the top issue. But when you have Afghanistan, when you have what's happening in Israel, Ukraine, and now Haiti, add that to the crisis, it gives a feeling yeah. that the world is on fire and there's uncertainty, and that plays into the election. A feeling of uncertainty. Haiti's on fire. The world is in chaos. Alex Ward, again, national security reporter who covers the White House's role in forming and executing U.S. foreign policy, can he give us fairly and accurately and without political spin the actual situation? Because the world's gone to hell in a handbasket under the internationalists he praised who are going to restore foreign policy, and how can anyone trust this guy? How can anyone trust a man who wrote a book praising Team Biden, criticizing Donald Trump's foreign policy, the world is on fire now that Biden's there, not that Trump is there. He's going to lose his access if he criticizes him. You can bet we're not going to get fair portrayals of what's going on in the world from Politico now. He's not going to be able to criticize and undermine his own work that the book cover helps us uh, know as a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize. He's not going to jeopardize that book. So how can we get fair reporting from the Politico when their reporter was given access and in that access wrote a fawning portrayal. And in that fawning portrayal, we see the reality is the world is in chaos and on fire. Countries are collapsing. Nations who are our allies are wondering what's going on with us. And by the way, you can't just blame the Republicans in Congress. I mean, Biden is betraying the Israelis because the hecklers complained and he wants the anti-Semitic progressive base. You can't blame the Republicans just for Ukraine. And everyone in the media blames the Republicans for dragging out votes on Ukraine. The Biden administration is the administration that dragged out giving the weapons to Ukraine that they promised. But they all want to blame the Republicans, and they don't want to hold Joe Biden responsible. Remember when Republicans pointed out Vladimir Putin never invaded Ukraine when Donald Trump was in the White House? Well, it infuriated people in the media when you did. They chewed you out, said you were just just humping Donald Trump's leg. You you were just, you were lying. Uh, he was going to do it anyway. The only reason he didn't is because Trump was in his pocket, so he was getting what he wanted. Really? He didn't invade Ukraine when Trump was there. Hamas did not slaughter Israelis when Trump was there. In fact, much of the Middle East gave diplomatic recognition to Israel. The one that really, I think, doesn't get enough coverage now is in El Salvador, in particular with Bukele. Forget all the Bitcoin stuff. 
The man went to war with the drug cartels and gangs. The Biden administration said they were going to send Kamala Harris to Central America to find the root causes of the illegal immigration. The chief root cause of illegal immigration from Central America are the violent gangs that will machete your head off if you don't pay them and you don't have the money, so you have to flee for your life. And Bukele came in, turned the military on the gangs and the cartels, rounded them all up, locked them away, and what is the Biden administration response? Civil rights abuse, civil rights abuse. You're treating the bad guys badly. We can't have this because human rights, human rights. The guy solves your illegal immigration problem in El Salvador, and your position is to turn him into an international pariah because he solved the problem. By the way, kind of does get back to the whole theory that Biden's okay with illegal immigration, the fact that he wants to punish the man who stopped illegal immigration coming from El Salvador. Are you going to get that from Politico? No, you're not going to get it from Politico. They'd lose access. Are you going to get it from much of the mainstream media? No, because they agree with the Biden administration. They hate the Trump administration. So they're at pains to acknowledge that the world is descended into chaos under Joe Biden, not under Donald Trump. It's under Joe Biden all of these things have happened. And because of Joe Biden and his foreign policy and his chaos, you know, the, the talking heads on CNN were right. People don't go to the polls and think about foreign policy. At least they have it in a couple of decades. But they're going to start again. And in the back of their mind, they're going to understand that they may have thought Trump was the chaos candidate, but Joe Biden brought the chaos and the danger and the terrorists to our doorstep and emboldened bad men around the world and then punished the good men who were fighting the bad men. That's the Biden administration, a foreign policy run by woke progressives who believe that we are the bad guys, and the bad guys, well, they're just victims of us. I don't want you and your company to be a victim of your computers. You know, your employees, they should be good at the job you task them with, not good at maintaining their computers. And vision computers can maintain your computers for your employees, so your employees can maintain your company for you for just $179 a year. Vision Computers can maintain your com company and your company computers and, and serve as your IT department offloading. If you've got an IT department, the 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 random routine tasks and questions about email and printer support and how do I do this and that? Why isn't this working? Vision can take that over. Free up your IT department for their uh, resources for security and networking and things like that. All you got to do is go to visioncomputers.com or 404 Compute. 404 Compute. Call them and tell them I sent you get an even better deal. And by the way, you don't have to have computers from Vision Computers to take advantage of this. They can they can help your company even if you got your computers from elsewhere. But next time you for your home or office want a good computer, go to Vision Computers instead of the big box electronics store. If you go to the big box electronics store, you're gonna get a one size fits all corporate consensus built computer. With Vision Computers, they're gonna talk to you and get your consensus on what you want in a computer, what your objectives are with it, how long you want it, and how upgradable you want it to be. Vision Computers will save you money and build you a computer that you're not going to get outdated very quickly. It's going to be one that works, and you're going to have them by your side to make sure it's always working, and you have the answers to your questions. VisionComputers.com or 404 Compute. Now listen, those of you in Kalispell, Montana, Sacramento, California, wherever you are listening to me right now, you too can take advantage of Vision Computers by calling them at 404 Compute. Tell them Eric sent you. They'll give you an even better deal that you're not going to find at VisionComputers.com. Hello there. Welcome. The phone number 877-973-7425. Should you wish to be on the program? Happy to have you as always. Y'all, have y'all heard about this encounter? Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez yesterday. Listen, listen to some of this. Uh, her with, with uh, what's his name? Uh, Bobolinsky. Did you deal? witness the what? president commit it's, it's, a crime? Is it your testimony today? Yes. And what crime do you uh, have you witnessed? How much time do I have to go through it? It is simple. You name the crime. Uh, Did you watch him steal something? Cor corruption statutes, you, RICO and conspiracy. What is it? What is, are, uh, what is the crime, sir? You, you, Specifically. You, just, uh, wait, you, keep, uh, you asked me to answer the question. I answered the question. No. RICO, you're obviously not familiar with. Corruption Excuse statutes. Excuse me, sir. Excuse are, me, sir. Excuse me, sir. RICO is not a crime. It is a category. What I is the, it's the category crime? of crimes that you're then charged? You under have charges. A long hundred. You list have charges. Statutes. 
Sir, please name. the name, name. The exact statute sir, under RICO? Yes. Oh, well, it's funny. In this committee room, everyone's not here. There's over eight lawyers. All right, sir, I reclaim my lawyers. time. <laughs> so, it, excuse, tr Donald Trump today. Did you know that RICO's not a crime? Actually, uh, you idiot. It actually is a crime. The Racketeering Influence uh, Corrupt Organizations Act is a crime. It is a statute. It is a crime. And there are underlying crimes tied to RICO. You idiot member of Congress who practiced that in front of a mirror the night before so that she could grandstand a blithering idiot. RICO is a crime. And he named that crime. And then you told him that was a category. No, 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 no. It's an actual criminal statute, you idiot. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know she practiced that the night before. She stood in the mirror and she rehearsed all that. I, I guarantee you she did. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, the left ate it up, the right ate it up. That's the problem with the um, with this situation is while the Hunter Biden investigation has exposed a double standard of justice and to some degree has inoculated Donald Trump from corruption accusations because the Biden family clearly has corruption issues as well. It's not doing anything else. They've caught the tiger by the tail uh, and they can't let go. But at some point, the Republicans need to land this plane and let go of the tail of the tiger and hope not to get mauled by their base. They promised blood and we've gotten this farcical stuff on TV, and even Donald Trump isn't talking about it anymore.